irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to the Hypno Fairy Godmother Show with Shirley Yance, only on LA Talk Radio. Hello, all, and welcome to the Hypno Fairy Godmother Show. I am so glad that you found me today. I am Shirley, a clinical hypnotherapist, coach, and author here in Southern California, and a glitter and rainbow girl going way, way back. So um, I work, my specialty is working with the LGBTQIA community, the kink community, and the BDSM community, or basically anybody that just doesn't feel like they fit in that traditional vibe. And I wouldn't have it any other way. That's just who I am. You are my people. So my hope is that we get to have a little fun, a little inspiration, maybe make you smile, maybe a little giggle to your heart, which we all need every now and then. So let's get this show going. You know how we do this. So if you're in a safe spot, I just want you to take a deep breath, hold it in, and exhale with a smile. Yeah. So part two, still that safe place because, you know, don't want you driving, lifting heavy machinery, working on a project that you absolutely have to get done and you're not. So, but part two, here we go. Need you to wiggle your toes. Come on, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle your toes. Inside your shoes, outside your shoes. It really doesn't matter. Today's a little chilly, so I'm actually uh, wiggling inside a pair of socks. Whatever works for you. Now, let's wiggle that butt. Come on, wiggle, wiggle those butts. Scrunch them together. Go, go for it. Come on, get into the rhythm. And I have never met anybody that can do that without smiling. So I'm sure you're not one of them because, you know, wiggle your butt. So now take a deep breath one more time. And as you exhale, say to yourself, I got this. It's going to be okay. No big deal. Or some little short affirmation that keeps you going. You know, um, everybody has their other their little affirmation you never know you might even come up with a new one today that's kind of what i'm hoping so um you know now you have loosened up your toes your ankles your lower back your buns your shoulders give it a head roll if you've got the time oh we are ready to go also want to remind you at the top of the show that if you like the show and you like the way things are kind of going, I would love for you to be a Patreon member. You can find it under, surprisingly enough, Hypno Fairy Godmother. You know, I kind of keep up updating my page. I've got some really fun stickers and some other swag I'm kind of adding on there. Got a couple meditations that are going on there that are going to be great. So for all of you that have become patrons recently, thank you so much. Every little bit counts. You are my heroes because I love doing this show for you. And I love doing this show for me. So let's go, my lovelies. So now that you have found me, yay, and you're with me today, we're going to cover another part of Weevil Kung Fu. Or more ways of becoming that person that you wish you would have had growing up. So I hope you all had a great weekend. And, you know, this is this is kind of a new thing. So now that the election is pretty much over, both sides need to do a mental reset. Win, lose, draw. There have been so many ups and downs recently, or even this week, that today we're going to work on that reset. Just little things you can do to kind of bring yourself back to center. Because you know that that's the most important place to be. And we're always working on your, you know, your mental health and your ways of just in the day, you know, and the week. And we just take things little by little. 
So as you may know, Weevil Kung Fu is my version of stepping out of that comfort zone. Yep, it isn't a gay thing, a straight thing. It's a human thing. And it reminds us of what we've gone through and the positive direction that we're going. So, you know, we need to start resetting ourselves back to center. Um, I hope you've tried some of the other things that I've brought up in past shows. They come in handy. They're nice to have in your little mental health toolbox. And I hope to just be, you know, adding a few more here and there. So the first thing that might come in handy is something that we have talked a little bit about, and that's meditation, which is the focus of being, you know, getting back to your mindfulness, noticing your thoughts, and hopefully quieting your mind by focusing on those breaths. You know, uh, I, I love the breathing. I got to love the breathing. And our breath is always with us. Wherever you go, that's the one thing you can guarantee that you always have with you is the ability to make a nice breath. We can always go back to it if nothing else is working. A lot of times just sitting there and doing deep breathing can get you where you need to be and kind of settle things down. And I read something recently that I've been doing for a while, but I never really had a name for it. And it's always weird when you're doing something and somebody else has a name for it and you're like, that totally works but they are actually called swing breaths. So you picture a swing. So as you're filling your belly and your lungs with air, you hold it. And when you let it go with a, with a really long exhale, you just kind of feel like you're swinging, you know, on a swing. So you're, you're kind of like breathing in and then swinging it back out again. And you get to let that exhale just go for as long as you want to. It's just one of those other things. And I kind of have this tendency of when I'm doing my deep breaths or when I'm showing somebody that I will actually rock my body back and forth. So I never really realized that, but swing meditation actually makes the most amount of sense, that swing breathing. I've also started practicing something recently that um, I actually learned from a lady named Catherine Beard that is called meta, med meta meditation. Wow, that's going to be a nifty one to say. I guess that's why I never talked about it before. I get a little tongue tied. But the translation for meta is loving kindness. And it's the type of medication, meditation uh, that most people kind of think of is a chant or a prayer or kind of whatever you need to call it. So basically you start out by wishing yourself well and you can sing it. Although, you know, singing isn't my best thing. So I kind of sing to myself. <laughs> um, but, you know, my mantra includes things like, may I be happy? And may I be healthy and may I be safe and strong and may I be calm and just little things like that. And the longer version, which is actually Sanskrit, I will not do the Sanskrit part, but you can also is may I be free from danger. May I have mental happiness. May I have physical happiness. May I have ease of being in life. And you can make it easier you can make it shorter you can make it longer it's it's about how it makes you feel but it's being kind to yourself it's thinking that these are the things that you need and these are the things that you deserve you deserve to be happy and healthy and safe and instead of waiting you know start every morning by telling yourself and you can sing it you can chant you can meditate it you know however you feel the need to get it out like i said 
I don't sing. I'm more of a chanter and things like that. So after you've done that first thing, the next step is to sing or chant those same wishes for each of the people that are closest in your life. Family, friends, one by one, go through it. And then if you want to, you can spread that out even farther to coworkers, maybe friends in the community that have helped you out, acquaintances, anybody that you wish this upon. And once again, it's that thing of, you know, you're singing it and you're getting it out and you're spreading it to the universe. You know, you're just kind of giving out all those great, great feelings. Now, the next part that they they tell you to do, which this is like by far the hardest part, is when you try to wish those things on people maybe you have a conflict with or people that you have less than positive feelings about. And it's not easy. And as it turns out, it's not about them. It's about you. It's about you putting this out to the universe so that you feel like you did your part. And that's wonderful. It really is. It, but it's not easy because when we think of, of you know, focusing on positive and all the things that you wish for your friends and family, now you got to try to wish those on other people, but it's for you. It's, it's, it's to help cleanse your feelings. Those people may, they'll never know, but that's okay. It's kind of like when I've had people come up and say, you know, I'm going to pray for you or I'm going to do this. And, you know, if you're not of that religion or any religion, which is why I usually say you can chant or whatever instead of pray, is that I just always say thank you because anything positive is not bad. If somebody's wishing me positive, uh, you know, aspects or they're wishing goodwill upon me, I'm taking it. And why wouldn't you? People tend to get offended way too easy when somebody says, I'm going to pray for you or I'm going to do this. You know, you don't have to give them the big, long speech about, well, I don't follow that or I don't do that. Um, I've had more Jewish mothers than you can imagine. And I love every one of them. And when they say that they are doing something in my it towards me in a positive way. You know, I will light a candle for you. I will do this. I'm like, thank you. So never turn away anything positive. If somebody says, oh my God, I like your hair. That blouse looks great. Don't look at them. Just go, thank you. You don't have to stop and talk to them, but acknowledge it and absorb it. You know, I'm always talking about how you know, if you see somebody, smile at them. I know that's harder to do since we're wearing masks these days, but smile. They can tell. Even with a mask on, people can tell when you're smiling. Promise. Um, and then just keep moving on with your life. It's not a relationship. It's a smile. It's a thank you. It's what it is. So I love that part, but I know wishing it on people you don't think too highly of is a little harder, but yeah, it's for you. Along with gratitude, you know, stay connected and nourish your soul. You know, if walking in nature fills you with peace, then do it. You know, if you know you have a favorite recipe and you can make it and it lifts your spirits go for it we're all just trying to go from one day to the next you know we're we're coming and we're 
starting to try to thrive again and get out there and more resetting and do stuff for you that makes you happy. Maybe take a long bubble bath. I love taking bubble baths. Maybe massage, do yoga, read a good book. Oh, last night, getting a warm towel out of the dryer and taking it to go take a shower. Just think of that. Is that not like one of the greatest feelings ever? You know yourself best. You know what works for you and what doesn't. These are the important things. You know, honor that inner wish. Let's say you want to eat Cheetos on a non-cheat day. Guess what? Eat some Cheetos. It's okay. You're not, you know, eating the whole bag every 10 minutes. You know, do do yourself a little, you know, do yourself a little good. The other thing that I love to do is make yourself a little meditation station. Maybe a little place in a room or a house or under a tree. For me, it's my Zen Den, as in whispering Zen. But make yourself that little place where, you know, just that little space for you that you can call your meditation station or your Zen Den or your peace palace, whatever works. Um, I also have a place in my mind that I can go to whenever I need to. My little Zen Den is my quiet little place in my subconscious that is just for me when I need to work things out or when I think I need to be alone. Um, you know, and I do this with the help of self-hypnosis. So I can get into that mindset pretty quick now when I need to. Um, with the help of self-hypnosis, you know, it's like three or four deep breaths and then I'm there. So that's kind of why I teach all my clients self-hypnosis. It's usually not for any specific thing. But if you just need to get your head back in focus, then being able to get into that little place that's all of yours, that little mental hidey hole to do, to do you, is it's a great place. Another wonderful thing that I didn't really think too much about, but Give yourself a self-care power hour. Now, I know I'm adding more time and you're like, how am I supposed to do this too? I have never said that you have to do everything that I suggest every single day. I give you lots of things to pick from, but you don't have to do every single thing every single day. Because if you did, you would spend all day just, well, you should be breathing. But, you know, you spend all day doing this. No, 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 no. This is do what's best for you with the time you have and the space you have. So when I, I say a self-care power hour, that is giving 20 minutes to your mind, 20 minutes to your body, and 20 minutes to your soul. Those are three, those are your most important things, you know, and some people work best doing them first thing in the morning, get up a little earlier, you know, and, and do your power hour. And by the time you hit the front door, you are ready. Some people, on the other hand, love to do this at night, give themselves that final hour of the day to just get everything vented and everything out and settle your mind settle your body settle your soul and that's one of the great ways that can help you sleep a lot better too so it depends on whether you're kind of a morning or a night person if you can only do this in the middle of the day it's not the best but man any time that you can take 
would be the best. And it's also the best thing is to do the full hour. So not 20 minutes here, 20 minutes here, and 20 minutes here. The whole idea is once you're done with that time, then you're ready to either start your day or you're relaxed enough to sleep. So yeah, it's not, this is one of those things that you do need to do all together. Sorry. But me, I love doing this at the end of the day because then I can get my mind together. You know, I can stretch out my body before I go to sleep. You know, I can vent out all the things that I've been worrying about all day. So that's not such a bad thing. Um, and then this next thing. Oh, this next thing. Okay, so I did this this morning. And I'm not quite done yet. But this morning, I cleaned out my digital life. I deleted emails I didn't need anymore. I was purging contacts in my contact list and my phone. People I don't talk to. People I don't remember who they are. Or people that I just don't want to associate with anymore. I haven't talked to them in a while. And if just seeing a person's name in your contact list makes you feel kind of bad or ugly, it's time to delete purge let that go because why have that that's like little torture i know people that still have all their exes in their phone are you planning on getting back together i don't think so so purge the people that make you feel bad you know and as you're doing it notice it every time you hit delete it kind of gives you a little bit of a giggle. Kind of kind of makes you smile. Feels like look at that. They're gone. Um I've had some people that I've deleted and it kind of makes me sad. And I've had other people that I've wanted to delete five or six times, but I can only delete them once. So purge all those contacts, all the emails. Some of us have apps on our phones that we don't remember ever downloading them. Sometimes when you get an upgrade on your phone, they add apps. Didn't want it, still don't want it, delete it. There's no app police that's gonna you know, call you and go, why did you delete my app? Let it go. Maybe it was something that you used to do, but you've moved on from there. Doesn't make it a bad thing. Just delete it. You know, I unfortunately have to delete everything off of all of my electronics separately. Don't know why. It shouldn't be that way. But hey, that's okay. Because some people, I got to delete three times. Think about that. So that was kind of a, hey... So when you do that, you know, think of it as decluttering. That can be one of those things that you do that will help your soul. That will help your internal soul get rid of these people because you don't need them. Or the emails. Holy moly. I got so far behind in emails because I quit going backwards and backwards and backwards don't know how it got out of control but it felt really good to just be clicking on those things and getting them out of there so i highly recommend the um digital purging <laughs> now as you know i'm always telling you to go outside that it's okay as long as you're careful you're allowed to go out into the human world so while you're doing that, go someplace new. Yeah. Just because you're going out doesn't mean that you only can go to the places that you know. Maybe there's a park that you've heard of that you've always wanted to go to. 
maybe a historic area. Last week, I recently learned about a new historic area that had no idea it was this close to where I live. And so we're planning on going, hopefully very soon, to get out and go check out this place because it's totally fascinating. Maybe it's, you know, a new little shop. I, you know, just some place that you've never been to. Some place that, you know, is fascinating. Maybe you're like, hmm, wonder what they have. You know, go for it. It's 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 not a it's not a huge thing, but we all kind of need a change of pace too. With all the chaos that's been happening in the world, sometimes you just need something different. You know, this weekend I saw thousands and thousands of people dancing in the streets. Now, I do not recommend dancing in the streets unless the street is closed. Um, and this also has to do with being careful, wearing your mask, do whatever. But dance. Dance like you just don't care. Dance like, you know, you see all those adorably cute toddlers on YouTube and stuff like that. Just dance into the mu music like their bodies. It's just let, let the music feel your body and just go. Even if you're a bad dancer, it's okay. Because when you dance, it makes you feel good. It raises your endorphins and you're stretching out all those body parts because you're not like crimped up like this. You know, you can let your arms go, let your hips go. Nobody cares because you're doing this for you. And maybe if they see you dancing, they'll want to join in too. You know, I personally love to headbang. Now, the funniest thing about this is that with short hair, I just don't have that hair, that really long hair that makes headbanging awesome. But it doesn't stop me. But, you know, I may have to get one of those really long haired wigs just for my headbanging when I feel like doing that. Um, which also adds that sense of funny. And if you can do something that makes you feel good and makes you laugh, you are right there. Because you cannot have two emotions at the same time that are that differing which means you cannot be happy and sad at the same time they're just two conflicting things so if you're you know raising your endorphins and you got music on in your house and you're dancing around while you're vacuuming or you take your phone with your headset and you're dancing around the block or in line at the store you're doing these things for you and they're making you happy so go for it absolutely go for it um and i would love absolutely love to see videos that you can put on my facebook page of you dancing around the park dancing around the house that you're having fun dancing with your kids, your nephew. I dance with my dogs. You know, just do something goofy. Be goofy. You all have goofy in you. I know you do. You just may have forgotten how to do goofy. So, you know, buy a pair of glasses with a big fake nose and just dance around. So, we also have the holidays coming up. Now, we don't have to get depressed about this. You know, we know that for some people, the holidays are a lot more depressing than for other people. And a lot of us have lost family this year. Some of us have lost friends this year. But we can do celebrations even with or without that, you know, those, because they never really leave. 
they're always with you in your heart. So when, you know, with the holidays coming up, we've been told it's not good to be in large groups still. So set up with your family or friends a video call, maybe a Zoom, whatever, um, and have dinner together. You know, you can all be together, but not infect each other. You know, think about, you know, the, here's the cool part. When you're done, you're already home. There is no driving. There is no taking a flight if you needed to do that. You're already home in your comfy clothes. You've probably been wearing your jama pants all day long anyway. You didn't even have to get that dressed up. These are family. These are friends. Some of us have family we're born with and some of us have family we make. Some of us have a little of both. You can have dinner with one group, dessert with another. Um, there are other group, there are other programs besides Zoom that can also do group movies. You know, where you guys can all be on one line and have dinner together, click over and have movie night together. You know, grab your popcorn or your big old piece of pie, shut the lights, turn the TV on and watch a movie together. It's fun. You can, you know, chat back and forth. It doesn't matter what kind of movie it is either. I know people that watch horror movies for Christmas and, you know, or you may be a Hallmark Channel kind of person. Whatever. Agree upon yourself. But if you can't be directly with your family, and of course, you know, the hugs aren't quite as good, but a smile's a smile. And a smile's a smile. I guess that's that's the big thing. So, you know, you're taking care of you, but you're still, you're not alone. There are ways to connect. So this next one actually has to do with connection. So we've all been shut down for what it seems like forever. They open, they close, they tell us we can go out and then back in. So, and we've all said things like, I'm going to do this today. This is on my plan for the week. But if you don't have somebody to be accountable for or accountable to, then what are the odds you're actually going to do it? So tag a friend. Now, that could be somebody that you know personally. That can also be somebody you met online. Um, during this, this pandemic, I've actually made some pretty good friends online. Um, and we've done the face chatting and stuff like that. So, you know, some of you may have actually met some pretty nice people online. Doesn't matter who it is, but it makes, if you connect to each other, then you have somebody to be accountable for, or they have somebody to be accountable for and accountable to, you know, just somebody to make sure that you are taking care of yourself, that you're going out, that you're eating right, that you're sleeping right, you know, um, and it kind of helps you remember to take care of you. Now, you don't have to get on a call every night and talk for hours and hours. That's not my thing. But what if you text them every day, every other day with something like, I hope you're doing okay just checking in or how's it going or have you eaten today last week i got a text that just said happy friday i was thinking of you it made my whole day um you know because i do miss this person and we don't get to see each other very often but it was just that little two line text message that was like you know happy friday i was like and all day long i just kept going i love this and so i actually was like texting other people that maybe you know i hadn't checked in with for a while 
and was like, hi, how's it going? Um, sending people goofy pictures that always works, you know, um, don't be, don't be naggy. So if you do get a buddy that you're texting back and forth with, that is kind of making you feel accountable, which is good. Um, you know, don't start just like 50 times a day. Um, people have lives. That's why I said maybe once a day, maybe once every other day. Now, if they don't get back to you within 24 hours, then I might double it up a bit because what you're doing is you're checking in and connecting with another human. So if, if you don't hear from them, then it is actually really important for you to check in on them. But, you know, you can check in on a neighbor, you know, um, if somebody that you live close by and you can go, okay, at seven o'clock we're meeting right here and we're going to go walk for 30 minutes. Okay. Well, now it's not just you. Now you're responsible to that person for actually showing up. So those are always great things. Um, like I said, the most important thing out of all of this is taking care of your mental health because we have no control on what happens on the outside of the world. We just don't. We wish we had more control. We wish that things could go a little easier, but if we don't have control over the outside world, what we do have control over is us. You have the total control of how you feel. Nobody can make you feel any way you don't want to. They just can't. That's giving somebody real estate in your mind and in your subconscious. They aren't paying rent. So take care of you first. Now, if you have, you know, kids, little teacup humans, that's all right. You know, you have to take care of them too. It's very important, but, you know, use it as like, if you're on a plane and they say the oxygen comes down and put your own oxygen first and then help somebody else. Your mental health is your oxygen besides all the breathing that I make you do every week. But what that does is, you know, if you aren't taking care of you, you can't take care of somebody else because you will get so burned out and then you start resenting and whether it's people that have stayed employed this whole time um people that became unemployed because of the pandemic people that are kind of doing everything they can to just make it through a day if you can make it from the beginning of the day with some nice health of breathing and you can make it to the end of that day then you get a gold star because sometimes it is so hard to just make it through a day which is why when you have all of these wonderful things in your toolbox you know set an alarm on that phone now that you've taken all the apps off of it that you don't need set an alarm and it may say you know the alarm goes off and your phone flashes wiggle your buns it may say stop and get water walk around the house walk around the yard you know walk around the block it could say go get water make it something you know dance for five minutes give yourself those little breaks we should never be working longer than two hours at a time. Now, if you have a job where every two hours you can't just go take a break, I understand. <laughs> but hopefully, you know, you're given breaks no matter what your job is. And 
instead of working through the break, take it. Absolutely take that break. Step completely out of the situation. Whether that means if you're in an office, leaving the office to go walk around the block um, or wherever you may work, even if you work from home, stop, take a break, go do something, not for hours and hours, you know, give yourself that, you know, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you're allowed to have. Make laps, do squats, stretch out. Because usually if we've been sitting and doing, concentrating on something for at least two hours, your posture has changed, your mental health has changed. You may not even remember what it is that you're doing. You're just sitting there staring by now. So it's important that you get up. Physically get up because by physically getting up, you are now stretching out, you know, those body parts, those knees, those hips. If you can't tell, <laughs> I was a former massage therapist. So besides working on your mental health, it's also working on your physical health because nobody wants to see at the end of the day that your shoulders have gone up and your neck has gone down because although turtles are cute, you as a turtle, maybe not so much. So by stretching every couple hours and putting your shoulders back and rolling that head and maybe writing down something. Um, at this moment, I feel. And then go take your break, walk around, whatever, and then come back and maybe finish that sentence and how you felt when you left the desk may be totally different than what when you come back you may have actually you know got yourself back to center that's why you know i tell people that it's about getting yourself back we can be doing stuff and you realize that your mind is either in the past or in the future. So what should I have done or what do I need to do? Neither of those are healthy, neither. So what you need to focus on is now. And that goes for at home as much as it does at work. Once again, taking care of your mental health. Um, and you know, when I, when I tell you some of these things, I can feel, I can literally feel some of the reactions of some of you, you know, I don't want to go outside. Oh my God. What if my neighbors see me dance? I don't have an hour to give myself a power hour. I can't think of anything nice to say about myself. You can. It's not easy. Sometimes when you're writing those first meditations or your affirmations or your just little words of wisdom to yourself, sometimes they can be hard because you're like, I, I don't know what to say. It's not for anybody else. When I tell you to write in your journal and I say, you know, every little emotion, you know, if it's something huge, write it down and then go back and figure out what made you feel that way. And once you do that, let it go. These are all things that you can do. Some people, you know, have psychiatrist or psychologist to talk to some people see hypnotherapists it's it's all how you take care you know find a friend find a person that maybe you can talk this over with and go okay so today you're not going to believe this she wanted me to do more 
and you can discuss whether you think it's a good thing or a bad thing. I would, like I said, I would never have you do something that I'm not willing to do. So I have my journals and I have my me time where I'm alone and it's just for me. And that's perfect. Even if you have a partner or a large family, you're still about you. If, and if you end up with a day where you are so incredibly busy that it takes everything you have to just remember to breathe normally, then the next day, schedule you out some time. Just put it in your calendar and go from three to four on Mondays. This is what I'm going to do. Or as soon as I get this done, what I have to do, then I get to do the fun stuff because I look at all of this as fun stuff. I do, you know, where I can start thinking about it and organizing it and, you know, going, okay, so where's everybody going to be for the holidays? Hmm, let me think. Okay. And, you know, kind of start planning and organizing. Um, I love, you know, crafting. I'm a crafter. So I make something or I epoxy something. It, it, it's, you know, little things draw. Um, I was recently told that writing in a journal is um, a lot harder than somebody thought it was going to be. Well, maybe drawing in a journal. If you're more artistic, then draw in it. You can draw angry faces. I'm not an artist, but I can draw angry emoji face. So if that's what you need to do, then there you go. You know, I encourage you to do what makes your soul smile. So if you can do something that makes your soul smile, that makes you laugh and makes your heart giggle, you know, Send somebody the goofiest picture you have on your phone. It doesn't matter whether you took it or not. Just send it. You know, you're going to get a reaction. That's why I do it. You know, um, find, find little spaces for yourself. You know, if you have a tree in the yard, oh, I wish I had a tree. But if you have a tree in your yard, sit under the tree. Set out a blanket, you know, thing of water, um, depending on the time of day, maybe a cup of coffee, maybe a glass of wine, whatever works, but do that and, and have you time. If it's after the kids go to bed, then it's after the kids go to bed or before they wake up, but set that, set, you know, set the you time. Nothing is quick or easy. Nothing is. It took you a while to feel this way. It may take you a little longer to get out of that. Nothing happens immediately, but we can all do it. We can. You know, if it matters to you, then it matters. And that's what I, that's what I kind of live by. You know, sometimes you have to embrace the fear of trying something new or going someplace new. But, you know, try it. Just do it. What have you got to lose? Come on. As long as you're safe and doing what you need to do, then that's perfect. So always take note of your mental state. Always take note of your mental state. And know that... You know, I always repost everything. I do take online appointments if you need. And, you know, if you want to work one-on-one -on, -one on some of these, I would love to talk with you, not on the air. You know, with any comments, questions, stories, whatever, email me at the fairy, have no fairy godmother at yahoo.com. Like I said, I would love to see pictures of you meditating or dancing around the house or whatever you're going to do. So, oh, one last thing before we, we finish off with our last deep 
cleansing breath is um i just kind of wanted to do a little shout out here i'm kind of excited um i once again i actually got chosen to be a speaker at next year's um hypnosoft live in las vegas it is a gigantic hypnotherapy conference that we have every year last year we had to do it online or this year we had to do it online next year hopefully we'll get to see all the people that we we missed last year but um i was so excited so i get to be a speaker um it's not until august so hopefully by then we kind of have this a little more together but okay so now that i got that out whew, anyway so if you're still in that safe place because you've decided to spend the last hour with me perfect if you're not then wait and do the deep breath later so take a nice deep breath hold it and exhale with a gigantic smile thanks for tuning in I hope to see you next week. Bye now. You're listening to The Hypno Fairy Godmother Show with Shirley Yance, only on LA Talk Radio.